Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to make use of a, a fairly modestly specified oscilloscope to teach ourselves a few things about uh, measurements and also look at uh, the effect of um, uh, light when it's interacting with electrical components, in other words optoelectronics. So let's start uh, by leaping straight onto the bench and looking at the breadboard. Okay, let's start by looking at the um, optical devices. So here we've got a light dependent resistor. Um, it's a component just with a couple of leads. And uh, here's a close up of the actual optical part. And you can see that the uh, darker squiggly area is the part which uh, reacts to the light. And essentially the operation um, uh, works by uh, when photons strike the, the crystal lattice of that material they become electrons and they become available as, as charge carriers if you like and the net effect there is that the resistance between the two electrodes reduces um, so the uh, best way to describe that is that the resistance of the light dependent resistor is inversely proportional to the amount of light and we can see that um, I'm going to use this arrangement a little bit later on but here I've got a white LED pointing directly at a, a light dependent resistor and um, I can switch on the LED there you can see it um, and it simply illuminates the LDR so what I'm now going to do is um, I'm going to just connect this analog meter which is set to resistance um, across the light dependent resistor and we're in daylight so I've just made a little cardboard cover to just to cover up the um, try and exclude some of the the ambient light so remember this is an analog meter and so zero is there so higher resistance is here so in darkness or uh, semi darkness um, the resistance there is certainly um, probably about 8k something like that approximately so if I turn the LED on now so the LED is on you can see quite profound change we're down to um, certainly just under uh, 100 ohms there and if I turn the LED off again straight back up to about 8k if I take the cover off you can see it does drop down to about about 4k so we can still observe that but it's not quite as um, quite as obvious so that's the action of um, a light dependent resistor uh, so if we're going to measure its its performance and how fast it's, it can change I want to, that's what I want to make use of the oscilloscope for unfortunately oscilloscopes don't measure resistance so we need to find a different way to do that and the obvious way of course is to uh, put a voltage across that res resistor and then measure that voltage um, as the light level changes so I'm just going to reset the uh, cir circuit on the breadboard for that and then we'll have a look at what happens to the voltage okay now I've got the uh, meter set up to read in DC volts and we've still got the, the wires connected across the LDR as before and I'm going to um, put about 5 volts uh, across the LDR I've also got a current limiting resistor here just um, to stop any problems when the voltage reduces but first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to cover up the resistor again to just exclude any extraneous light we'll put the power on and um, straight away there we're on the 10 volt scale so uh, we've got about three and a half volts something like that I'm reading it from the side so the resistance sorry the voltage across the resistor at the moment is about three and a half volts so now I'm going to switch the LED on and you can see quite a profound effect we drop down by order of magnitude really so just uh, under uh, half a volt there about 0.3 volts so that's LED on LED off and the uh, voltage increases again and if I take the little cover off you can see it does drop down a little bit so we've still got that same relationship so the voltage across the LDR is inversely proportional um, to the light level so now I'm going to get it set up so we can watch that voltage using the oscilloscope okay I've reconfigured the setup now so I've got the oscilloscopes 
channel one trace which is yellow um, measuring the voltage across the LED so we can see what's happening on the input side of this little arrangement and I've got channel two which will be the blue trace um, reading the voltage across the LDR so I'm now going to apply um, a pulsed uh, square wave to well just a square wave to the LED like so and you can see it flashing away there and we can see the, the shape of the square wave it's actually about a frequency of about 10 Hertz which is of course easily visible and channel 2 of the scope I'll switch that on now and we we'll just turn up the volts per division so that you can see what's going on get and probably one more so yeah what so what's going on here then is we've got LED switches on straight away the resistance drops and because we're measuring voltage as a proxy for resistance so the um, the voltage drops when the LED turns off it does take a while for the recovery of the LDR so it's not not as instant as when um, the light turns on now I'm going to just put the little cover on there just so we can get more of the effect from the LED rather than just the ambient light as well um, so you can see it has made a little bit of a difference so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the frequency and I'm going to go up to 40 Hertz there's 40 Hertz and it is just just still just visible if I do that just visible as um, there's flashing at 40 Hertz um, and if I go up to 50 Hertz which is the European the mains frequency there the flashing does does vanish um, I sometimes think I can see it flashing but I probably can't uh, and yeah the LDR is still keeping up but notice the recovery time now is starting to impact on on how much change we're getting so let's now go up to 100 Hertz so that's a hundred Hertz and I'm just going to alter the time base a little bit there so you can see again so the LDR is taking longer to recover now let's go up to 500 Hertz that's 500 Hertz just to just the time base a little and I'm going to increase the volts for division so we can still see the effect so now I've had to go up a couple of notches in, in volts per division and that jitter is because it's a, a much uh, weaker um, signal that we're sensing off the off the LDR but it is still managing to keep up let's go up to one kilohertz that's one kilohertz and it's still still managing to, to keep up with it so that's pretty good let's go up to five kilohertz so there's five kilohertz and this is becoming quite difficult to read now um, that's 10 kilohertz and it is readable but there's uh, quite a lot of noise and it's um, not so easy to read the signal out of the noise if I turn up the volts per division there to the mo most I can do um, yeah the, we can still see the signal but there's an awful lot of noise too um, and if I go up to 20 kilohertz well it's not becoming very readable now at all at 30 kilohertz and that's 50 kilohertz and even if I do that I think it's fair to say we're not really able to to see the um, the changes reflected using the LDR okay um, now going to move on to look at uh, a photo transistor and see uh, let's see what that does so I'll just get set up for that okay so I've now um, reconfigured the arrangement to use this device here which is uh, actually an opto coupler that I recovered a few years ago from a bit of, um, of scrap equipment uh, what we've got here is um, here's a close-up so we've got um, an infrared LED and a photo transistor and you can see marked there on the plastic case is the symbol for the, the photo transistor which is a it's actually an NPN transistor symbol uh, but the uh, it doesn't have a, a base lead and that's because the photons received from the infrared LED uh, act as the um, as, as the base uh, voltage or current if you like at which uh, switches the transistor on and off now the LED is infrared so I don't think I'm going to be plagued by um, the ambient light or hopefully not in, uh, to make any difference in measurement so you won't see any flashing this time but I've got an identical arrangement um, pulse voltage going into the LED and I'm reading the which will be the yellow channel so let's switch that on 
so we obviously can't see anything because it's infrared but that's the pulse voltage going in and channel 2 I'm reading the output from the transistor so let's now switch that on and let's just increase the volts per division a little bit so you can see it so first thing to note straight away is that the transistor at 10 Hertz is actually tracking the the pulse um, almost exactly so we haven't got that um, that slow to recover uh, effect that we saw with the light dependent resistor so it appears to be uh, responding much more uh, uh, quickly than the LDR was so up at 50 Hertz and I'm going to alter the time base so you can see it still um, tracking no trouble at all we'll go up to 100 Hertz there uh, still the same up at 500 Hertz and we've still got um, pretty much the same thing going on so I think you probably know where this is going that's one kilohertz and again yeah it's still tracking it perfectly well now if you remember at about five kilohertz we'd lost completely the um, LDI it wasn't much use we are starting to get some lag there now but um, it really isn't very much compared to what was happening with with the LDR so clearly the photon transistor is a great deal uh, more responsive and that's 10 kilohertz and again that's still tracking it um, rather nicely let's go up now so now at 30 kilohertz we're starting to get um, a little bit of a shape that looks a little bit more like the LDR but notice the the voltage is still uh, swinging across by the same amount we haven't got that uh, the recovery time isn't affecting the the change in voltage and just for um, completeness sake let's go up to 100 kilohertz so that's at 100 kilohertz and at 500 kilohertz we can't really see very much let's go back down to the point where we might start to detect something there we go so that's at 200 kilohertz and we are starting to see something um, but it's nowhere near as noisy as it was before so at 150 kilohertz yeah, I'm starting to make the waveform out and it's coming back up um, and we, we can see the, the waveform there. If I increase the volts to division, yeah, there you go. Um, remember, I'd got the volts for division up so high on the LDR that we got that noise, but as you can see with the transistor, it's a very different thing. Let's just um, see what we can get. That's right that's 500 kilohertz now and if I turn that right up yeah okay we've got similar noise level but uh, got a lot of noise there now but we can still make out the, the pulsing pattern at 500 kilohertz and if I come down to um, well that's 300 let's go to 250 that's 250 kilohertz and uh, the signal is, is is following the track there, albeit um, with a little bit of noise. So clearly, the phototransistor is uh, able to respond respond far far quicker than the light dependent resistor. Okay, well, hopefully um, that's made a bit of sense. So a few uh, good learning points there really to to recap. First of all, uh, although oscilloscopes are essentially voltmeters we were able to use it there to measure uh, the change in resistance on an LDR and we were also able to to use it to measure the um, switching on and off of the the photo transistor so good bit of learning there from that point of view and we've also learned that um, the scope uh, was able to show us the response um, to very rapidly changing uh, light levels uh, and in the case of the LDR certainly uh, after a few kilohertz it became uh, not terribly effective but the uh, photo transistor was good um, to several hundred kilohertz and I'm conscious that that photo transistor actually is quite old and um, there'll be more modern and faster devices these days now if you've been thinking well it's all very well Bill but what's optoelectronics got to do with anything I think I better conclude by saying 
Opto Electronics is absolutely everywhere. You'll find Opto isolators in every switch mode power supply, of which there's got to be at least half a dozen in every household these days, and they um, isolate the high voltage side from the low voltage side. And you also um, perhaps remember that most uh, electrical signals in terms of the internet and phone calls etc are now transmitted fiber optically so that will be uh, the data will be encoded on light uh, of some kind whether it be uh, visible or infrared or whatever and that will be transmitted down um, fiber optic cables and the other end there'll be um, photosensitive devices which are decoding um, that that received signal. So um, Opto Electronics um, is a very very large field um, in the world of technology and I suspect its influence will, will continue to grow. We've come a long way from the days when your uh, film uh, camera or SLR camera had a little um, cadmium sulphide photo uh, uh, cell in the in the light meter which just responded to the to the changes of light didn't need to be super quick there was a little needle which moved up and down in the viewfinder some of you might even remember that hope that's been useful thanks very much for watching if you've liked it please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down comments are always welcome if you've not subscribed it'd be really good if you could subscribe I'd appreciate that thanks for watching see you on the next video